Shout out Devin coming through again. Second time on the Miami Hustle. I think brought, three. Is he brought his three. boys again? Soon to be three. Family right That's here. cousin. That's a cousin right there. Devin's the scout. Devin's the scout, huh? Yeah, you already know. But Devin's a hustler. That's why it runs in the family, runs in the blood. So we're out here talking to the right people, making the right connections. That's how we end up meeting people like this. So if you guys want to just introduce yourselves real quick, like where you're from, your name. Uh, for sure. Um, I'm LML Savage. And I mean, I just be repping Broward County hard, man, and keeping it real like my podcast. Shout out Miami Hustle for having me on their podcast. And... To my manito over here, Devin. Um, Love, bro. You know, respect always. That's all I gotta say. Yeah. <laughs> what, what do you do? Um. Well. What don't I do? Let's see. Hey. I, it all started honestly on repost and tagging. Uh, like five years ago, I realized the power behind Instagram. And when no one else believed that there was a way to get like big people to watch. I said, I'm gonna make them watch because I'm gonna annoy them. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna bother them until they don't, they just say, fuck it, let me see what this kid is trying to tell me he's on. And yeah, it took like four years for that. I mean, behind a lot of hard work from myself and people around me, they put themselves in position in the music industry right now um, and you know are doing great jobs. Uh, first and foremost, Lito, the chosen one, Shout out Lito, the chosen one, that's my brother. Um, has done any video that's done in Florida right now, he's probably the one that scouted, produced it. Cool. Got them the cars, got them the females to twerk, you know. Um, got them the house that looks like the trap. The most important part to you know? of a shoot. You need the females, man. Um, he's clean with all the biggest directors. Shout out Shot by Jolo, one of the directors that we he deals with the most and has shown me a lot of love because of shot by jolo i was actually able to interview ancla ancla is farruko's artist cool. um and that happened i was the first one actually to get to speak to him after he had almost got killed in puerto rico and survived he's actually in a wheelchair right now Damn. um and that hadn't been announced because farruko didn't want anybody to know at the moment so but thank you to ancla for the love that's what's up. Good shit, man. And you brought the brother today with you? Is that the bro? Yeah, this is your boy Frenchie, LML Savage, best friend with brothers, locked in. And I'm just here to support him up the movement, the hustle, you know? Hey, there's always a... podcast, and then we got the Miami Hustle, man. Nah, it there's always a team, a team. yeah. It takes a team. team. You gotta have a squad, a, a group of people. A group of people around you that are gonna push you and make you grind. It's... If you hang around people that are not doing shit, you're not gonna do shit. I mean, and real recognize real man. Yeah. Feel me? Facts. Well, I brought my dogs up yeah. on here. Yeah. Uh -huh. My name Devon. You already know. Feel me? Yeah. They just want to pop out of Miami. So the real deal. Yo, this guy's talent. How'd you guys all meet? So <laughs> I met Devin Tell him. at uh, my actual job because, <coughs> excuse me, what I do with the music is my hustle. On the side, I have an actual career, I guess you can call it. I run just the logistics for, you know, a, a decent mill company. You know, it makes good money. And what mill work is, is basically all the inside stuff that they change out on really high-end homes, like mansions and penthouse. Like, oh, the rich lady's like, oh, I want my closet to look like fucking pink. Mm -hmm. You know? I got you. We go and make it look like fucking pink for her, you know? And stuff like that. That's Just an example. So it's a lot of responsibility, but I do what I do, man. Is it hard work? Like you're up there? Oh, uh, yeah, it's a lot of lifting, a lot of hard work, but I can't complain. I'm getting compensated pretty well at yeah. the moment, so I'm okay, you know? You guys still work together, or that was back in the day? No, that was back in the day. That was back in the day. Like, how long ago? Bit. How long you guys long know ago? each other for? That was like four four months ago. I saw oh, shit. And shit. It wasn't convenient. Mm -hmm. That's what's up. And we, we actually met through there, but like, we didn't meet through the music industry, you feel me? We were just, like I said, real recognized real. I was always clicking up with him, with working, chopping it up. One day we got the gram and he saw I was rapping. I sent him some shit over and the same night he posted it, you feel me? From there is history. Yeah. Yeah, go make sure y'all go um, look at the Hills post on uh, Devin's uh, Instagram for me and tell him to uh, drop it. 
to stop playing games. Yeah. Yeah. Official, man. You feel me? If I see them it's coming, it's coming for you. It's coming soon. So what what made you want to go into that, like, uh, the reposting game? Like, that's something that I've never looked into or actually many people don't really know about. So what got you interested in that and how did you pursue it? Beautiful question. Um, the drug lord. Who's the drug lord? That's my family. This is somebody that I've known since middle school. We had lost contact for years because he had moved. And then later in life, we bumped into each other and it was like heaven sent. And I got his back 100%. I believe he has mine 100%. Um, and who's the Jug Lord? Jug Lord is someone really respected, a big artist out of Broward County. Um, right now he's working with all the hardest artists out, man. That's CY Jim, shout out. GPE Gus, his manager. Uh, AD the Great. Kodak Black, his entire team. Sniper Gang Showtime, thank you for the love. Um, like I said, XXX, XXX, XXX Vamp Gods from Formula 9 Studios, um, and I could, the, the, the list goes on and on, but how did I, what inspired me? Like I said, I realized no one is above and beyond anyone else. If I just come at these people correct and just try to show them that I'm working hard, eventually they'll fold and show me love back and you know it might not happen quick and it didn't bro it took a long time Fold but, for the benefits. but one of the biggest artists that immediately started pretty much anytime i would tag him repost me was a chocolate i love you bro you already know um but it's not because i know them on a personal level that would be big capping on my end and i don't cap you feel me but over social media they have shown me a lot of love they helped me with followers repose and i help them a lot without ever asking for anything in return just love yeah, you know? and uh out of that i also was able to get uh, recently to promote at uh, amsterdam holland the uh, chulo's performance i was with him you know behind the scenes drinking beer with a chulo and his people. Shout out Nestor um, Cortez, I believe. Nestor Cortez, uh, he's a Cuban baseball player, number 12, pitcher. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I got him. to meet him. We were hanging out with him in the back, you know, oh, yeah. chopping it up. That's um, Yankees, right? That's yeah, Yankees, Yankees player. Yeah, shout out Hialeah. We played against him. I played Hi baseball yeah. in Gables, bro. Yeah. We, yeah. Yeah. Bro, we played yeah, play against baseball. him in the regional, awesome. the regionals, yeah, yeah, yeah. bro. Yeah. We, yeah. we, we yeah. played baseball when we, were, when we were in high school. Top notch bro. Yeah, man. We yeah, were playing bro. against like Archbishop McCarthy and shit like Same. that. That's, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Big schools, man. I but, went to uh, American. Nice. For American oh, oh yeah, yeah. You guys were balling, man. Yeah. We were more like the urban school. Uh -huh. We weren't horrible. It's just we didn't have no one pushing us for real. We would just do it like wilding out. You feel me? Yeah, and yeah. then the coach that we had, he was a piece of shit. Yeah. That's a that's yeah. another story. Hey, but shout out, shout out Nestor. But Nestor. shout out Nestor, of course, and um. <laughs> What can I say, man? DTH Jug. Let me go back to him, just because that's really what this whole thing is about for me. Mm -hmm. well, that's what people don't know. Um, until he's not on in like main line for Rolling Loud, I'm not gonna be happy with myself. Yeah. You know, that's just my ultimate goal. Once that happens, then I'll let off the gas, maybe a little, and maybe not. It'll probably make me actually want to go harder at that point, right? So I shouldn't say I'm gonna slow down. I probably wanna go harder, but I feel like, okay, I accomplished what I need to accomplish now. You know, the rest is just a bonus, basically. Gotcha. But uh, check out his hit, um, his video, Slimy. It's coming out April 7th. Um, shot by Jolo. Filmed that. Shout out Trapland Pat, Buck305, MMG. Um, you already know, obviously, Rick Ross. I got to, um, quick little conversation with him at the Trapland and uh, Rick Ross big business video in Little Haiti, I believe it was. Um, where we, you know, where, where we dapped up and spoke, and you know, I just told him, you know, I'm here, bro. You feel me? Yeah. You show me love. Um, Yo, shout out, hey, shout out Rick Ross, the Miami hustle. He, he knows what's up with the hustling. Facts. He, people like that is what inspired us, you know what I mean? Facts. 
Facts. That was a big deal for me as a, as a high school kid. That's all I like listening to. Like, our school, every football game, all you were listening to was, I think I'm Big Meech, Larry Hoover, <laughs> Whipping Work, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Yep. One Nation, Under God, Real Niggas Getting Money from the Fucking Start, you feel me? Better music. You feel me? It's just <laughs> different. Or the Aston Martin, you know, but I'm, I could keep going with yeah, that. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? He's a different. For me, it was a big deal. Um, FC Jaheem, up and coming Broward artists. Let me talk about them. We have FC Jaheem. Shout out to him. Respect brethren, Jamaican community. Love them. You already know. All my brethren, I love the Jamaicans. They love me. Thank God. I love the dance hall scene, the reggae scene. Dance um, hall is different. Yeah. That shit. That, that it's, shit. A beautiful, it's beautiful. Yeah. Also, even, <laughs> even uh, Haitian music. You know? I, I don't know about y'all, but if you don't like it, or if you haven't listened to it, you yeah. should definitely check it out. I'm a fan of all music. All music, man. All music. All music. All music. And uh, friend, tell me out here, man. Who else, man? Talk to me, cause you know my memory is horrible. Talk to me. Let's see what else have we accomplished at this point so far. He got a video with SCY Jim coming out. He just signed to uh, QC, the label in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Facts. So I see people. He, got, he even got a video with him coming out. Shout out uh, SCY Jim. Big moves, bro. Big moves. Shout out to SCY Jim. Um, no, that, th- those are big moves. But how does how do those how do those moves get made? Like you off know a what straight I mean? promotion, like, getting from, his name out there. Oh, let me tell you what happened. Here we go. For example, with Jug, yeah. right? Yeah, how do you put you on? Like, what, what, what's the game like? Let me, let me tell you like how a lot of things kind of started popping as of recently already for Jug. Um, and no, I'm not taking the credit for it at all. I'm just stating facts. Mm-hmm. There was a video that I did of him um, in the strip club at a playhouse where he, we had paid off the DJ. Shout out real DJ Creep. Not paid off, but you know, you show him love. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Paid off sounds kind of too rough. That's how it works. So we showed him love and, you know, Jug told him, keep me playing all night. And he did. And that's where Slimy was revealed. Yeah. And Slimy is a crazy song. And everyone in the club was like, in the video, you just could see the, everyone's like, you feel me? You got one. You know? The energy was just different. And, um, he reposted on his page and that got a lot of attention. And um, he's been like on Kill Cam Reacts, has an interview on there. Now, whoever I've spoken about, Lito the Chosen One, the big producer, I mentioned him already. And Jug, my brother, the big Broward County rapper. Now, I got And Just We Trust. That's my boy. Mm-hmm. You know, that's uh, the heart of a lot of things in the team. Uh, Consistent, hard worker, just always doing what the fuck he has to do to make sure Jug gets to where he needs to get to. He's also a producer like you. Sweet. But he's also an A&R for Triple M Miami Music Management under uh, Beveridge and BLS Flow. I don't know if you've heard of them or not. They, uh, I respect them, you know. They got their their, their thing going on with Fredo Bang, that label. Um... You know, they're just hustling, man. They've been hustling for a minute. Uh, and you work with these different artists and you promote them on your I page. just promote them, but I actually have been able to be in the... I just know them through yeah. life, you know? Mm-hmm. Because I've been in the same neighborhood 30 years and I've never crossed anyone. And everyone knows that I don't like when people cross me. Mm-hmm. And people respect that. You know, when you just do what you say you're going to do. The, the most important thing you have as a man is your word. At least for me, that's how I look at it. And, you know. Um, that's the only thing you got in this world. That's what, the, the, that's what I try to do, man. Just, balls, yeah. man. I, you know, hey, I just shout make, out Scarface, <laughs> Scarface, 20 months. Words in your balls, exactly. And I don't break them for nobody, basically. No, nah, it's an uh, important principle. To that's what's up. So where does your, where do you play in on all of this shit? With the, uh, Jordan from well, right now, at this moment, I'm like, I'm basically just this official promoter. Like, my job is to be consistently annoying people about paying attention to him mm-hmm. and trying to get him venues or whatever the case may be. I mean, now, 
GP Gus is in the picture, which is his manager, and I respect him and I love him a lot. He's he's taking him to the next level. So now I'm just focusing on maintain, making sure he just stays relevant on social media, basically, at this point. Yeah. You know what I mean? But he just had a really big performance. Um, what was the place he had the performance at, French? Tequila? Tequila and Margate, where SCY Gym, place was packed. You know, we were out there. I'm filming my BTS, my um, yeah, BTS. Um, and just chilling, you know, like, Yo, that's like meeting up, everybody in the, you know. I would have never team. thought that reposting can get you, like, this many connections, which are, to me, like, the most valuable thing. So what makes, like, when you're trying to repost and get promotions and get connections, like, what makes somebody different in that world? Well, I mean, I'll put like, it like this. What worked out for you? Like, when you say be annoying, are you, like, in DMs and then on comments and on no. likes? Or how, okay, how does this, that work? This is what the key to success for me has been. I'll take a post. Like a song I like, right? I'll screen record it. I'll repost it. I'll tag the artist really big, you know, with some emojis, whatever. Make it look fire. And then, or like the link where it'll be like new song, open link now. You know, I'll do like a whole space it out, yeah, font. Make it shit. look good. And then I'll tag, but shrink like all the radio people and they're all looking, bro. Right now, uh, you know, Super Cindy, thank you, Alex Sensation, thank you, DJ Drama, thank you, Angie Martinez, thank you, Mega 97.9, thank you, um, Enrique Santos, thank you. You know, they they don't hit me up. That's yeah. okay. Yeah. But they're they looking. Show. Yeah. And I know if they're looking and on a consistent basis, they uh, uh, at some point they're going to be like, all right, man, this kid is fucking annoying, but let me see what it is he keeps trying to throw at me and some, it's like fishing bro you know you throw the bait out there somebody's gonna hit and then that's just how it works it's all about consistency, consistency. And, I, and I feel like you're gonna go far because you have a lot of gratitude too like you're out here thanking everybody and like you said like it's not that you have a connection with them you're just grateful that they're watching and like like you said with consistency and that mentality and like gratitude yo anything is possible bro you could you could meet somebody tomorrow that'll change your life forever yeah there's a song from Popcorn um, where it goes, my heart clean, filled with love. You know, that's just who I am. All right? I'm, but there's another side to that, you know? So I try to really just be as godly as possible because mm -hmm. the other side is just someone I don't really like tapping into, especially now. I'm married. I'm turning 30 soon. Um, I made my mom cry already enough, you know? So I really am at a point in my life, I have a decent job where I'm just trying to, you know, be more focused on doing this whole music thing, slash podcast thing, and whatever happens with my job has, happens with my job, you know? But eventually, I, I do want to be my own boss. I don't want to work for the man the rest of my life. I want to be the man, and that's coming. But right now, all I could do is keep hustling, bro, and keeping my face clean, and be the heart of the fucking city. That I, that's what I call myself. I take that personal. Because there's a lot of things going on in general that, like, I really have to put a seal of approval on for it to happen, to be honest. And thank God for that. Yeah. I say that humbly. But it's a big weight to carry, too, to be honest. People don't realize that, you know. I don't like it sometimes, but I put myself in that position, so it is what it is, you yeah. know. It's all about sacrifice and getting, like, putting yourself in uncomfortable Situations, because that's where you grow the most. Facts. That's where you learn the most too. Exactly. Vamp God, shout out Vamp God, man. Um, he was the first studio that me and French really were hitting up when we first like. So me and him have a similar story. We were the, the guys that came out of high school, just doing it in life. Like, had really good jobs, up, balling. Fuck college. I mean, I went for a little bit, but then I was like, fuck it, to be honest. Because by the age of 20, I was like a fucking store manager, and I thought I was a big baller because I knew I was making more money than friends that were actually in. Yeah. had graduated college, so I was like, fuck, what I need a degree for if I'm making more money than Woo Woo and he went to college. You Makes feel sense. Me? So I had a little career going on, and, you know, the whole new cars every year and living it up and traveling and doing everything big and designer and you know just living but then 
every you know everything that goes up must come down at some point and me and him had a similar start and then and when I was at that point that's where he came in strongest in my life and that's why I was my right hand man because we were basically really out here in these streets for a little bit just together figuring it out dog you feel me day by day sometimes ain't no money to eat whatever if we did have a little bread we were just trying to get some weed from the track you feel me and stay alive you feel me straight up that That was the that was the mission for the day stay alive and 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 fuck everybody because we were you know we were immature we wasn't we was more worried about fucking and drugs and so on and so forth now we've grown up and we've used a lot of things we did though that allowed us to gain respect throughout those years to put us in position to be okay right now where we can be up in people's face who matter and be like hey bro tighten up and they listen yeah you know because they they know that they can't sell us una película because we've been there you know with them throughout la película that's what's up bro that maturity is is what's going to take you far because unfortunately some people don't they realize it when it's like too late you know what i mean so the the quicker you can realize like what's best for you and like what route you want to take and the people you want to chill with um the better you're off bro facts there's also a baby he's actually someone that i i'm first time i'm gonna say this publicly that inspires me um I'm not gonna like get too deep into who he is or anything like that, but he's he's a big deal in Broward County, and I I look up to him because I could tell he's like a very loyal person, you know, and that's how that's the type of people I like surrounding myself with, with loyal people that are not on the bullshit, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So shout out, baby. That's yeah, the that's necessary. You need around you, bro. Yeah, I was gonna say that's probably how you met my cousin. So. Tell me more about that. Like, when you guys met, how did that, how'd that happen? Yo, Devin, I ain't gonna lie. Yo, Devin, Devin, how old are you? 19. This is this <laughs> the biggest baby i ever seen in my fucking life, man. To be honest. <laughs> this one, oversized baby. He has a wise mind, bro. He's no, mature. He's, he's, a, he's an old soul like us. Hey, shout out to the parents. Shout out to the parents that raised him. Shout out to the parents that raised him. time I get the chance, man. Mama, I know you're gonna be watching this. I love you. There you go. Straight up. And all the moms um, out there, bro, making it happen. That's why. That's why he's a wise mind, bro. He speaks like a man, even though he's 19. You'll right. never hear a 19 year old. And has a lot of confidence. Like has a lot of confidence too. <laughs> I'm telling you. And that's no, important I'm with you. the music. Yeah. He, like not everyone is comfortable to be like, hey, fam, let me plug in and like show you what I got going on, bro, and blast I- that shit, and and like. Yeah. Be like, all right, I know this, but he's gonna fuck with it because no. you're exposing yourself of being laughed at bro, at that point. I would be, you feel uh, me? Especially would, for me because I'm a harsh critic, but he actually has very good music. I'll so. be at work with him, man. Yeah. We're just on the way. Like he said, he work in a, in like high condo, so we we coming from Pines, our drive every day, man. To the point where, like he said, Damn. he be posting to annoy people. out playing that shit to annoy his ass. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was, hey, yo, let me every chance I get, let me plug in, let me plug in, and. And Thank God you fuck with work, it, you feel me? It worked because I'm stuck on uh I'm I'm stuck on the whole catalog. But once again, the hills, we need that to drop soon. And, and go go back to the hills, you know, like like he said, the repost he, he takes a track he fuck with screen recorded, that's what he did for me. I, I didn't ask for that, you know. Who, who produced that by the way, though? Uh shout out my man Tanner, you know. We uh part of ways, but I would say that's really a rough draft for my track. It wasn't really uh I have yet to master that track. It was one take. So I'd say God produced my voice for that. Hey, you know shout out to saying? God. But shout out to God. Yeah, shout out to God. God did, God, God did. Man, God and, did. and when I met, when I met uh, Savage, you know, Joey, man, we'll, we'll be chopping it up. And that night he reposted it. We didn't plan that. You know what I'm saying? I gave him my gram. I said, yeah, bro, here's my Instagram. He, he went out himself. That shows a lot who you are. You know, he shows love, not expecting nothing back. I didn't ask for that. You know, he knows I wasn't going to ask for that. And he did that out of pure intentions. And that's just how this shit is going to be done. You feel me? It's always pure intentions on my end and his end as well. And that's why we're in this position today. He used to vouch to me, you feel me? Like, yo, God put you here. You feel me? Like, this shit, we met for a reason. Because I really met him, bro. We, he a grown-ass man, you know what I'm saying? I'm just there to go get my money. I didn't even mention my rap shit. I didn't even know how I got into the topic. But it did. 
natural. It's because you're really? passionate about it. That's why. 100%. It, it, it'll come up. You know, anybody up. asks me, I'm a rapper, you feel me? I, I tell them what it is, man. Yes. Yeah. So. Not, like you said, he's confident. He, like, you like you think you annoy people. You're not annoying people when you're showing your stuff. Like, it's yeah. your hustle. It's what you're really all about. That's what everybody wants to see out of somebody is like, oh, man, this person's authentic, and they're really passionate about it, and they're going to they're gonna mess That's with your things. That's one thing, too, I respect about like, him. He's passionate and his consistency goes. Stop, bro. I respect that. Yeah. But 100%, I'm, I'm like, I'm pretty sure I'll speak for all of us too. Like, I'm the biggest, like, yeah, I'm confident, but I'm my biggest hater as well. You feel me? I down myself behind the walls. You feel me? But that's something you got to get out of mentally because shit that I don't fuck with myself, you feel me? And like, shit that I hate myself track wise. A lot of people fucking with it, and when I go at them confidently about it, even if I'm not fucking with it or not, they end up liking it. You know what I'm saying? At least I hope. Yeah. I always tell everyone, keep it real. Don't show no fake love. I'd rather you tell me what it is and what it ain't. Keep it real podcast. Keep it yeah. real podcast. Wait, Shout, the out Miami it. Hustle. Shout out Miami yeah. Hustle. Keep it real podcast. The Miami Shit. Hustle, man. This yes, is a sir. beautiful setup you guys have, by the way. So what, what, what inspired you guys to like start? Facts. Talk to me. Yo, uh, bros. This, this, <laughs> this city, by the way, is legendary. Fantastic. Like, it's amazing. Like, yeah. For, Thank you, bro. For, for the people who can't, I don't know if they'll be able to see throughout the video or not, but we, our view is of the... Uh, oh, 100% oh, they're going to see. They're that's what we're that. about. Yeah. Hey, we're, view, we're in the heart of Hustle. Oh, they're in Miami. Hopefully, in hopefully Miami you're right lucky. Now. Some guests, they come out here, they get the moon popping through. They get fireworks in the yeah, background. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like, the heart of we'll, Miami, see, we'll see what's up today. Today is just a plain... Uh, we're chilling. We got, we're chilling, man. We got the view. It's a beautiful city, bro, full of opportunities. You know what I'm liking? I don't even feel like I'm... Get an interview. I just feel like well, I'm hanging oh, out. Oh, you're, you're not. not. We are just vibing, <laughs> just hanging out with this is, Hey, this is not an interview, bro. Look, the Miami Hustle is we're out here hustling all day, every day. This is where we come to chill, Facts. and we come to just talk about what we've been through and like, like I'm sure you guys were hustling, bro, yesterday and the day before that too. So we come here to chill oh. and just learn from each other, and shout connect, out my man connect Chico. with each other. Shout out Chico, bro, because without Chico. Chico, bro, I'm not gonna Chico. lie, I would have never sold my music to this man, bro. Oh. You feel me? He, I showed him first, and he was like, yo, I got someone. He gonna come to the job site soon. This was when you were like departed from there, you feel me, did yeah. your thing. Yeah. You came through, and he's really the one that pushed me, like, yo, this shit hard, I got my dog, he gonna fuck with it. Mm -hmm. And I, I went off of that limb, you feel me, off of his word. Shout out, Shout out Suho. Shout out Chico, for a fact. Shout out Chico, Suho. Suho. A P, a -P Baby. A P Baby, 305 Legend. Yes, North Miami Legend. Legendary, bro. You feel me? A verdadero Tarzan, you feel me? Uh, a monito largo, you feel me? <laughs> man of the people, this guy knows everybody. You feel me? You're, 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 you're a connector. He's a real one. A verdadero cubano, you you're feel a me? This is my brother, he, he's he Cuban. He connected me And he connect, him. I connect, he, like, I connected yeah. him in Broward, he connected me in Dade, and then he connected me in him. 100%, bro. Me? And Just me and him have worked together for many years. That is another very essential, crucial part of my 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 close knit group that I have, you know. That's what's up. He's a big deal. Nah, you're a real one, bro. You He's actually the one that put me on with the uh, choke and all that. I'm sorry, I cut you off, my friend. No, no, you're good, bro. Talk to me. What were you gonna say, though? You're a real one. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I respect yeah, you're that. You're a real yeah, one. I'm a Look, man, I grew up poor. I grew up in a fucked up home. Um, my dream is bigger than just. At Lujo, you feel me? I have, like, a lot of people that I got to take care of. And that's the only thing I think about. Like, I, you know, having the nice house, cars, and everything's going to be a bonus for me. Now, if I can put my whole family in a better situation, then I'll be, feel like I accomplished something at that point. So that's all I'm working for. The rest will be a bonus. But that's all going to come, and I know when it comes, it's going to be in abundance. So I'm... Just staying tranquilo and humble, dog, ten toes. That's all I can do. Bro, me? so how's recording behind the scenes the ammunition video? I'm not sure a lot of people know if you did that. Yeah. You know? Well, I'm, I didn't do that. Cameraman Chris did it. I got scouted by my boy Lito, the chosen one, the producer, to basically play a role where I'm like that one chico that's walking around the hood smoking a blunt. I'm not going to lie. I get killed in the video. By the homies, but it is what it this is. This guy's an actor too. Yeah, bro. yeah. I, I was strapped up. He was a. Uh, they had kidnapped him and stuff. It was crazy. It was a. Uh, 
ammunition from Kodak's last project with, uh, with NFL 2-Up. I don't know if you guys ever heard of him. NFL 2-Up. And uh, nothing, man. I was in the middle of Golden Acre just acting, doing my Denzel, you feel me? Hey. I, I kick on my, my, my double personality comes out, you feel me? My other person comes out, and boom, I just... Lights, camera, action, just knock this scene out. The cameraman is always like, damn, bro, I ain't gonna lie. You, like, you really should be an actor, dude. I'm like, <laughs> Yo, I'm acting like, nah. is a skill. It's a skill. Yeah, I could tap in. I could get really mad really quick, cry if I have to, or you feel me? Like, because I feel a lot of shit, man. Like, I feel energy on a different level with people, you feel me? Like, right now, I feel that easy. He'll tell you. If I feel like I didn't, like, you guys were a threat to me, bro, uh -huh. we, would, we would either have left or already be on some, like, Negative situation, you feel me? But right now, I feel like I'm at Straight home. Love here, bro. You feel Straight me? Up. I feel the love. I feel the love. You feel me? So uh, thank you, first yeah, of all. So you I would, guys I are all also. Boys nowhere where it wasn't love, bro. You feel me? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. real. We got um. We gotta do trips, man. I'm like I said, I'm from Colombia. So if you guys ever wanna go to Cartagena. You feel me? Bogota, I, I haven't I mean, been to yeah. Colombia yet, but yo, all my boys say amazing things about it. They say that like whenever they go there, they got a tour guide with them, so they're they're taking care of whatever they need. They'll get it, and um, you know, it's important to have somebody that knows your way around or their way around. So they say they say they kind of live like the the GTA lifestyle, bro. You wake up in the morning and like the GTA lifestyle. Once you've won the game, bro, you just go out there. The U.S. dollar is so much more that you just you do whatever you want whenever you want. Money's not an issue, and it's beautiful out there. Like the nature, the, the yeah. mountains, and it's just different, bro. It's yeah, Colombia is great. I would love to check we it out. You, you been there? Yeah, I, I actually <laughs> lived in Colombia for three years. Okay. I went nice. to school over there, so at one oh, point shit. in my fam my parents, you know, they were wild and now, and they were like, "Hey, let's move back. Maybe life will be easier over there," which ended up not happening because we moved right back. Like, yeah, almost two. Two years, two, two, three years later, something like that. But I did uh, go to school, so I'm, that's why I speak and understand and can write and read proper, you know, Spanish. Gracias a Dios por eso, you feel me? So that's it. Uh, my wife, by the way, is a Dominican, so I've been trying to tap in a lot to them. That's my new market that I'm pushing now. I got into the Cuban market, thank God. Chocolate and his people for accepting me and showing me love and giving me opportunities. Um, Yo, shout out, <coughs> shout out to all the Dominicans out there, bro. Shout I played in my baseball team in high school. It was like 80% Dominicans, 20% <laughs> Cubans. Claro, claro, claro my name. Yeah, yeah. You already know them Dominicans. The Platano Power, bro. Platano, Platano Power, power is yeah, different. Bro. Their country's beautiful. I went over there for a, a rally recently. That was beautiful. Platano oh. and Mangu. You ever been on boogies and stuff, bro? And like BMX and all that stuff? And, or like an ATV race or anything like bro, that? Bro, I used to be when I was little, but I haven't yeah. been on one of those in years. Yeah, I'm talking bro. about like... You, gotta, you, got, you guys got to experience that once in your life. Of course. Middle school. Yeah. 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 I did a little thing like all around Dominican Republic. Sure, and also I say Oh, that I'm lying, bro. I did it in PR, yeah. Puerto Rico. But I, I'm, I was thinking you mean like just out here like freestyling. Like no, wherever. it was like... It's called Rally Frontera. And like people yeah, from bro, Puerto I got Rico it, go bro, to I got PR two. I got two warnings because I was just, you know, slightly you drifting. Enough. But like, yeah, bro, you know, I, I feel comfortable with it. Like, I can handle it. Like, but nah, they didn't like it, bro. They sent me to the back and I had to get watched. And then I still did it. And then they said, yo, one more time and you're out. I'm like, fuck. Yeah, I fuck with you, by the way. I'm wearing this hat disrespectfully because I'm really a, a big... Real, that's like big time. That's I a, think that a tells you hey. how, like your hat is like pissing me off because I typically <laughs> would have a Marlins hat on, but you know it's the proper color, so yeah. I wear this one. Yo, shout out to the Marlins right here. But yeah, I love I love the classic right Marlins. Behind us. I have a lot of great experiences with my. Yo, dad. how do you feel about um, the, the new uniforms that they came out with this year? <sighs> The red ones? Nah, oh, bro. bro. Yeah, no, no, no. The no. throwback. The throwback. The yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, the OG yeah. pinch. Yeah, yeah, the Florida yeah, Martins. Yeah. That's the shit, yeah. I love it. I wish they would go back. Yeah, I yeah. never liked when they changed those are my, the whole those are logo my favorite, to bro. orange and bullshit and Derek Jeter did all that crap. I don't like the new logo. I like this one right here. Respect this is, Derek Jeter. Derek Jeter way, fixed it a little bit. A little bit. Compared to what they did before. But that year, tell me that year wasn't disappointing when Reyes came. They underperformed like not, a that's motherfucker. Not Jeter. That was the other guy. That was Lord. he wasn't there when that they. That was That was the first year they went there. That was the other owner. The other owner did a but, revamp. They, and that year, they that, sold they were all the garbage, players. Though. They, they had a bought, bunch of great, great they players. Bro, they've been people. rebuilding for years, bro. For yeah. almost a decade. They have some decent people now. They're 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 fine. Surprisingly, but they won't win compared to what the division looks like. Everybody else in so? the division is amazing. Oh, oh, but keep in mind with the Marlins, how they won their two championships off of what. 
wild card, correct? Yeah. If we can stay in somewhat <laughs> of a dangerous situation, yeah, nah, oh, no, right. there's a chance they, they, they could always pull off a mirror. There's yeah, a, that's just how they are. But our, baseball, you never know. Yeah. Anything I mean, can happen. NL East is the toughest like, division in baseball. It's literally the the Mets, the Phillies. It's us. Like all those teams are uh, second base. Atlanta is one of the best teams in, in baseball, and they're in our division too. So yeah, it's got, gonna be it's gonna be tough for the Marlins to come out with the division champ. If they do make it, it's going to be as a wild card. And I think they only have a chance because their pitching is really good. They have one of the best pitching staffs. So. I haven't been watching. I got to tap yeah. in with you about the – because I've been, I've been doing bets with I them. Know. They done cast me out of it a little For time. Sure. They started, like, what, two weeks ago? I think it's the season like three, three four days ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're going to have to tap in because no. the stats real low right now. For sure. No, the For Marlins fact. are trash on paper. On paper, on paper they're trash. No, are we gonna have to lock in, But bro? question: When you played, play? what position did you play? Second base. I played second base for a minute, but then uh, to start my uh, freshman year on varsity, I had to switch to the outfield. So I became a center fielder, and then I stayed there through college. Nice. Oh, you, yeah. you play college baseball as well? Yeah, dog. I was, awesome. What? What? Uh, me, me and Chris were dirty. What school? Yeah. Uh, I went to American for a couple years, and then Goldman, and then I got a scholarship to Miami Dade. Nice. And Miami Dade is uh, pretty well known <coughs> they're always ranked they're always yeah, top yeah, yeah, yeah. and then the school we went to they just went, like they went states like they go all the time they so. knew what position you play not states they, they go to national I played third base my whole life but then I ended up pitching throughout college and then my last year of college I pitched and played right field because I missed hitting, bro. And I really missed base running. That was my favorite. Bro, I love I loved being in control when I was on the mound. Like I love pitching and and my off speed, my curveball was nasty. Like I wasn't the type to throw like 9500, but yo, I would, I, I could, I could pick my spots, bro. And like I'll, I'll play with the, with the, with the at bat. Like I'll know what I'm going for. I know the type of hitter. Like it was just fun, bro. And then base running, that was my shit. That's the best part of baseball. Is base running. Yeah. The thing is with base running is like since I was a pitcher, I know, I know what a pitcher's mindset is. I know what they're thinking about. I know what they're not thinking about. So when I'm on first base, bro, like I already know where his mind is at, and like, bro, I'm I'm out here like trying to steal every single pitch, and I'm not the one to steal like when he when he pitches. I'm I'm the one to do it. Like if the catcher's being lazy and it's kind of like throwing it slow, whatever, like, yo, I'm out, bro. Yeah. Like I'm out, like quick. You played ball too. High school, nothing crazy though. To high school's tough to make your yeah. team. Yeah, high school. Is... You know what I mean, we just did our thing. Yeah, we did our thing. I was, to be real, I got lost when I when I when I when I learned what pussy was, bro. To be honest, that's when my life took a change for the worse. Uh, that's everyone. Bro. You're not. You're not. You're not <laughs> alone. That's everyone, bro. It goes you're not alone. Alone. In a bad I, way, bro. But it changes. At fucking it thirteen changes. years old, you yeah. Know what I mean? Fucking, that's it. That's all I cared about after that. To be honest. So I respect people that can maintain their discipline. You feel me? I was trying you to be a major bro, You have to. So I, I take it really serious. That that it's that it's that temptation, bro. Yeah. That shit is real. But yeah. that's why you gotta you gotta be mentally. It's not easy. I'm not here saying it's easy, but you gotta be mentally yeah. strong, bro. Anybody yeah. with discipline, I respect them because I, that's one thing. I always had the drive, the work ethic, but sometimes I would fuck up with my discipline. Yeah. No, baseball that was teaches my you that. Too. Yeah. Baseball puts you in a place of discipline because when you go up to bat and you didn't put up the work, yeah. like you're gonna it look shows, like trash. Right? No, no, there's no hiding it. If you're not going to do BP on your own, yeah. like if you're a player and you just go to your high school and you go to the high school practices, you have yeah. no chance. Yeah, yeah you gotta the, do the, the ten the swings you're gonna work. get in, in practice is definitely not enough for what you need to be successful at least at the levels that we were playing at like Facts. yo and, and Miami's and top top players though. Miami's top players for sure bro and top coaches too like bro shout out all the competition out here because I remember in high school bro like if like you said if you're not out here practicing on what you're not good at like if you can't hit a curveball bro these coaches are out here on their days off scouting to make sure to see like let me see what let me see what Chris can't hit oh he's not good with that curveball all right, I'm getting with the curveball in our next game. And, bro, they'll come at you with three curveballs in a row, bro. And if you're not practicing, you're not getting better at it, you're going to strike out. And it's just embarrassing, bro, because, like, they just read you. Yeah. Like, your weaknesses, bro. Shit. Now, they take That's notes why you on gotta, you. They have yeah, scouting reports on you. They know, okay, he doesn't swing at anything outside. We're going to throw him everything. They know everything about you because you play the same team for four years. High school and college, like, they're, they're taking a look at you consistently. So if you're not working your dick off, uh... You're not gonna be good. You definitely gotta work. Especially in 
Hey, and let me just say something about let me just say something about stealing signs, bro. All right, because this astral situation, what I all right, look, when you steal signs with technology, that is whack. That's illegal. Don't do that shit. You're well, lame. Steal signs. That's the, okay. So like. The Astros got in trouble because they were stealing signs. They like had they, beepers they, under. Allegedly, there is no proof. Whatever. <laughs> All I'm gonna say is, look, if you cheat with technology, you're lame. You're whack. Don't do that. But if you're a pitcher, bro, because I was a pitcher, and this is the shit that I would do, bro. If I'm a pitcher and I'm not starting this game, that means I'm benched the whole day because I'm recovering. I'm resting, bro. I have nothing to do other than cheer on my team and try to get an edge while I'm on the bench. Bro, so I'm constantly stealing signs. Like every game, I'm I'm looking at bro. Some people get lazy with it. Bro, I know what their steal sign is. I'll tell the catcher. I'll be like, yo, I'ma scream your name. I'ma scream no. I'ma say like, yo, let's go, whatever. Let's go, Cavs. Some bullshit. And he knows like, yo, he's stealing. All right, for sure, done. Like, got him. I'll be able to tell, bro. I'll tell. I'll be, I'll be off that day, right? Like on the sideline. And then I'll tell the batter like, yo, if I say. Let's go 11, which is his number. That means that they're throwing you a curveball. Be ready. Just listen. Listen for my voice. All right, they come up. Because I'm paying attention, bro. I know what the fuck the catcher's doing. Oh, some goat shit. Yeah, yeah bro, because I'm off. Why, why not? Like, why not? So if then I'll tell him, like, yo, let's go 11. He sits back on that curveball, rips that shit. And that makes me feel good. Because, like, I'm out here benched, but I'm, I'm getting an edge on you guys. Like, yeah. doing your homework. I'm trying to win, bro. If they're weak with their signs and, you, and they're just giving one sign, like... You deserve to get stolen. I love stolen. that. I love you that. You deserve and bro, to get stolen. On multiple it's occasions, on, on multiple occasions, mid game, they'll realize that the signs are the signs are being stolen. They'll have to switch it up, and yeah. I'll have to. And you'll get it again. I'll have to like. <laughs> same same thing as this guy. Complication on their end too. Okay. Hell yeah, yeah, bro. That's a mind game, bro. Like I'm out here trying to help my team any way they can, bro. If I can help my 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 hitter get a hit, I'm gonna do it. I'm That's not just gonna sit back and bullshit, shit, bro. That's dope. You feel me? I feel like that. Like yo, if I can help my man's get up out there, bro. We out there, bro. So baseball shows a lot of discipline on life. The way you guys are explaining it, you feel me? Like, I'm pretty sure that's why you sports, here right bro, now. Sports, bro. Sports. Sports in general. Well. Yeah, sports in general teaches you a lot of discipline. Now, baseball is kind of special, too. It's like they say it's a one-on-one -on -one game, but you're on a team with different people. So you got to build the chemistry. You have to... And then you have to be able to be in that mental place. Like if you're a tennis player by yourself in the box, you're trying to face this one one pitch, you're, you're going after your thing. So I think that's why it kind of relates to being an artist too. Like you're, you're, you're focused on yourself, but it's going to rely on everybody else around you to and bring you up. practice shows. If you're out here hitting the studio for fun, bro, unless you're doing some like, an all love to Lil Pump, you know, just bumping his shit on the way here. You feel me? He has a good, shout out to Lil Pump. He has a good track with Youngboy. I, I don't mind. But like, Bro, you hit in the studio, you're not practicing your craft, and that's a life, but especially with the music shit, you're not practicing your craft, reposting consistently like him, you wouldn't be in the position you want to be. You feel me? So I feel like baseball has a lot of that aspect to it as well. Like, yo, if you're going to practice and only practice their 10, like, I don't know shit about baseball, but like mm -hmm. 10 hits, you feel yeah. me? That's not enough for the game, bro. That's not enough for the game with the rap shit, bro. You got to be practicing even when you're on your dick. You don't got time for it. Nobody paying attention to you, bro. You got to get that shit done. Feel me? Yeah. And J. Cole, I'm heavy on J. Cole. He said it. He was like, I might be dead broke, but I know these words I'm speaking, I got a million. Feel me? Because he's consistent on his work. And that shit going to show in the long run. Like you said in baseball as well. You can't hide it, bro. You can't hide. Maybe on Instagram, you could show a facade of who you want to be. But you can't hide in the studio if you're a good rapper or not. Mm -hmm. You can't hide it at all. That shit really going to show. For sure. So... Uh... I could tell by looking at a baseball player throw one time, and I could tell, okay, this guy's played before, he hasn't been playing that much. Like, You can just see in the way somebody moves, and I'm sure it's in everything. And if they've been in this shit. Once you've done the work, and you move a different way than somebody that's just starting. Like, that's a book I read, uh, Outliers. It's everything takes to be a master 10,000 hours. And that's like 10 years of eight hours a day of work. Wow. It's, ten, it's to get to 10,000 hours. That's consistency, bro. So. That's you gotta walk around with confidence too. Yeah, hundred percent, bro. You gotta walk, bro. If you're not, if you don't believe in yourself, nobody else is gonna do it. It's like you here by yourself in this world, bro. You feel me? You are you got. You all you got. You was here by yourself. Now a lot of people, yeah, there's a lot of good, hard woman people, but at the end of the day, you going to bed, you by yourself in your mind. You know, no matter who you got beside you, no matter who you could call, you by yourself in your mind, bro. So if you're not pushing your own shit, you're not confident in your own shit, you're not practicing your own crap, bro. You basically don't believe in yourself. Who's going to believe in you then, bro? You feel me? A lot of people got the heart for this shit. And then there's a lot of people that got the talent, but without the heart. You feel me? And that's why 
shit plays out the way it is. Hustle beats talent. Never forget that. 100%. Hustle beats talent. Um, I'll take someone that that's fucking hungry and not the best over the best who's not hungry. Yeah. I bro. swear to God. Yeah. No, if you're not hungry, you fall off. And vi- vibes too, bro. It's, like, it's just simple, bro. You got to have a crazy work ethic because nothing, no matter how fucking amazing you are, is going to work without you being consistent and putting up the drive and all that shit. And it, it's vibes, bro. Like, I, I say this and I'll say it again. You feel me? Like, bro, I'd rather be here with you guys. You feel me? I'd rather be here with you guys or whoever I'm with. If I know the vibe is raw, bro, I'll record in the back of a fucking tour bus. I'll record in the fucking bathroom. I'll record wherever. Them go record at a million dollar studio, which I know the vibe ain't there, and the producer really just there to do his work. Mm-hmm. I'm not catching that vibe to be real. I walk off. I don't care if it's a million dollar opportunity. You feel me? That shit gotta be real. I'd rather be on my dick recording with someone I know, gonna have my back, and like I know they into it, and like I could come up with you, than someone who's just doing their job and don't have that faith in you. You feel me? Because at that point, energy is real, bro. Manifestation is real. I can't be hanging around that person. I was gonna say, in music, the energy is everything. Like if, you, if you're recording and the vibes music are, are energy, like, there's no way that you're gonna put out a good track. It's there's zero no way, percent bro. chance. If you're music recording with a producer that just not putting his energy into it, bro, how you think that track gonna boom? You feel me? But if let's say the track does boom, now he's gonna want to put his energy into it. But he wasn't doing it when you were, when it was his opinion. Now he's going based off of everybody else's opinion. They're like, damn, everybody fuck with him, but you wasn't fucking with me when it was just me and you. You feel me? So I'd rather be in a stoop. In a fucking garage. You wasn't shooting with me in the gym. You wasn't shooting <laughs> with me in the gym, for real. Like, yeah. I'd rather be in a, the studio with, in a garage with a fucking $30 mic <laughs> than in the studio with a producer that I just know don't fuck with me. Mm-hmm. And you can have as much production as you want, bro. That's just my vibe. That's why I don't I don't give many people the opportunity to fuck with me in the studio, you feel me? As of recent, my latest producer, like, like, even jo- uh, Joey, bro, we haven't hit the studio yet, you feel me? That's my dog. I know the vibe is there, but I'm very picky in them situations, you feel me? If it ain't there, I'm not there, bro, and I'm very self-conscious. I know I'm not going to be there, so I'm not going to waste no one's time. Yeah, yeah, everything has to happen time. when the time is right, right 100%, 100%, especially with music. Bro. You can't force things, um, and I say that because, for example, there's this feature I've been wanting to happen really bad, which is with Jug and one of my Chico homeboys, you know? And I know it'll be a banger I guarantee you guys That shit will Probably blow both artists Because it's been so long And it's not that they say no to me But it's just It hasn't happened You know But I know when it does It's gonna take off You know what I mean So I have to stay consistent And annoy them Until they both say Okay fuck it Let's just go to the studio That one day I know with the right amount of alcohol A little bit of blunt mm-hmm. Woody woo, the hit will come. <laughs> it will. Yeah. I swear to God, because they both are the realest. What we'll stop at them. what they do? Um, scheduling and that my my chico rapper is not really rapping at this moment. He's concentrated on more important things. Mm-hmm. So I have to wait for him and just be able to get inspired and Hand be like, up. all right, let me let me let me do this feature for. Jug, you know, and it's not that he doesn't respect them, they actually are great friends. It's just we want it to be when the time is right, so the energy's right, so that is it looks right on camera. Because I want to do all the videos with everybody in the stool, chained up, you know, la película, you feel me? And, and hopefully, something will happen out of that. And that's fire, you see, so. that's fire, you see, for what it is, you feel me? It's, it's good you yeah. got an eye for it because a lot of people don't see for what it is. They, they see it for what they say. You know what I'm saying? It's good you see for what it is and, and you face the reality, no matter how devastating it is. And I've been I guarantee you, if you wanted to, you get that studio right now. But you see it for what it is, and you're like, you know what? We are gonna give it time. My my heart's been broken a lot of times too, bro. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> me too, bro. And I'm a 19, lot of times, bro. I'm 19. Like, and I, no, 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 no. And and it's not even. And I'm saying from the music thing. Everything, I, bro, even female wise, is. I'm saying in every every but. The, the whole repost thing has actually broke my heart at times because I've been like, damn, I'm doing all this shit and this person isn't budging. Like, you know, fuck, what else do I got to do at this point? Because I don't want it to be on some... What am I trying to say right now? Like, like I just wanted to come organic, but it also is frustrating that it takes so long sometimes. Mm-hmm. And that's where this year has been 
a big year for me because a lot of people without me really like harassing them are starting to pay attention consistently. Nice. So real life. <clears throat> Yo. Yo, Devin, <laughs> let me just tell you something. Since you're so young and you said you've been heartbroken, there's a lot All more. Hey, let me, yeah, 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 let me just tell you. 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 There's a lot of heartbreaks coming. It's all good though. Every day. Hey, but listen though, but it's all good though because what you need to understand and need to realize that some people don't, unfortunately, and I learned this through, you know, my mistakes and shit. You have to love yourself, like wholeheartedly love yourself and be good with yourself and be good with being alone with yourself before you like give give all that energy and love away to somebody else because if they there's no such thing as being heartbroken if you love yourself bro if you if you love yourself your heart's going to be full no matter what happens in life and that's the shit that separates people that go through a lot of crazy shit when they go like when they go through a breakup or an upset with their career shit but if you uh love yourself stay true to yourself and have faith bro you're going to be good I don't know I'm so, gonna break a lot of hearts of my haters when I drop this out. <laughs> that's a hundred percent. You feel me? That shit motivates and feeling the same. You know, hey, I love yo, this guy. You know, I said, <laughs> the, I said yo, I don't know what haters yo, are though, bro. Hey, look, I, I don't know what break. haters are. I don't hey, worry haters about haters. Are my main motivation. I'll I don't worry that. about haters, look, bro. I, I say heartbreak, right? But to be real, bro, that's where I make most of my good songs. So keep coming through. You feel me? Keep, <laughs> keep breaking you, my heart. I get you. I, what, I get you. What doesn't I kill you? I love myself regardless. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Yes, sir. As and an I'm artist, if I'm you could die do... trying to be rich, or I'm gonna be rich when I'm dead. <laughs> And that's what it's gonna be. Yo, that's what's up. Shout out 50 Cent. Get rich or die trying. That's, that's, yo, that's what I live by, bro. That's why I hustle every single day in my life because I don't care, bro. Like, we're all gonna die one day. But I'm gonna do everything that I possibly can in this one life that I have to make sure that the parents that raised me are good and they're set. Bro, that's all I care about. Shout out 50 Cent, but we keep that shit 100 you, all the time. What do you guys think about no the 6 ix 9 situation, man? Bro, honestly, I don't even want to speak on that shit because it's it's it's, it's a bunch of bro. He talked he tried talking about it last time, bro. I don't I don't want to talk, bro. There's a lot right, of negativity listen, within that within that, that shit. Energy bro. on the listen. track, bro. I think that man's trash, bro. I don't care, and I'm gonna stick to that. <coughs> I've never listened to a rainbow hair guy. My, my bad, I didn't mean to touch you, touch you so gently. Nah, bro. It's just it's a lot of it's a lot of negativity in that topic, bro. He got that attention and them. Yeah, you guys are got Cubans, tattoos, you know, and you know he dropped a song bro, over there, giving everything. out money. I don't, I don't know. That's but I don't know. I don't, like, I don't know. I don't know anything, anything, bro. I don't follow. I don't follow anything yeah. that happens in that story because yeah, it doesn't you know benefit what? me. Fuck I don't question. care. I know the, the most care. basic when version of it, and that he was fucked up at the Martins game. Hey, but so, like, so. no matter who it is, I don't wish that on no one. That's but what I'm saying. That's why I don't need, like, You are manifesting about it, that shit the way you move. No matter how you are, not saying the way he posted on social media, but you My move like that. Up. Nah, you're good, bro. You're good. I had to do a little controversial shit. Really. Hey, if you want to <laughs> talk about it, we'll Yo, talk Andrew about Tate it. Bro. Nah, bro. I Andrew just Tate hopped out, bro. At the end that of the is day. crazy. Yeah, we can talk about that. We can talk about that. Oh, yeah, he came out looking crazy. He did come out looking crazy. Bro, he came out, bro, like, like if you were still in the cell, fucking the guard, yeah, walking yeah, back and yeah. forth. He's got hair. Yeah. He's showing yeah, the same yeah, shit, saying yeah, fuck the crazy. media. Nah, hey, for real, though, shout out to Tate Brothers, bro. Especially like, his brother, bro. His brother look, here's the thing, like, just, and I know that because we got an audience, so some people will, will like that we shout them out, some people will not. So let me just tell you, like, Nah, but let me just tell you on both ends, bro. Even if he's guilty and he was doing the shit that he was doing, it's crazy to me that they locked him up while he was talking about, you know, the Matrix and, and how to free yourself and try to try to follow your, your passion. They don't want you to hear that. So it's crazy to me that, like, they locked him up for something that has to do with women as soon as he started taking off with this Matrix shit. It's like, why didn't you lock him up back in 2016 when he was involved with all this shit? That's a very touchy subject, bro. Yeah. I mean, so again, like I'm not gonna pre preach and be like, yo, he's innocent. Like I don't know what the fuck went down behind the scenes, but what I do know is that what well, he speaks is facts, bro. bro. And that's what's important. And what's more fucked up about the situation, in my opinion, is like people are pushing the narrative like if they want that shit to be true. If it's really in your heart and you think this guy's bad at doing that, you would not, I would hope you wouldn't want that shit to be true. Like, yo, uh, God forbid, you know what I'm saying? Like, nah, people out here pushing like, yeah, he did. Like they want him to get convicted of these things. You would want that shit to be false, no matter your hatred towards the person. Because if that shit is true, which I don't know, like you said behind the scenes, it's fucked up. You feel me? Exactly. But that's none of it's none of my business. I don't know what's true or not. But what I do know is that they locked him up while he was going crazy talking about this Matrix shit. But they made it because it was a, a women situation. It's just like man. Let me just I don't know. Yeah, that's all nah. I'm gonna say about. Hey, that, funny coincidence. He gets released. I think it was yesterday. 
uh, the day he's released is the day the Matrix was released, like in theaters or something. Oh, it's the yeah, same, yeah. Crazy, same yeah. to the day. Yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. same day. Just I to saw throw that. it at his ass. Like, you try to fuck I don't know if it's on purpose you. or not, wow. but that's like a weird coincidence. It is. Yeah, I, mean, I don't so. believe in coincidence, bro. Aliens, all type of shit. I didn't know that. Sometimes. Bro. That's crazy. Yeah, what's up no, with aliens? That is crazy. That's yeah. fucking yeah. crazy. Hey, what's up with aliens? What's you guys think there's aliens out there? There's been a lot of sightings. Bro, why? I believe in aliens, bro. The way I look at government said there's aliens. Bro, the way I look at aliens. You don't like think so, dog damn, breeds, bro. bro. Like, we human, we a different breed of alien, bro. You feel me? There gotta be pit bulls out there or some shit. Yo, I was gonna, a, 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 I was gonna say, look, my, a theory. Hey, my stance on aliens is I feel like us as humans on this planet Earth, there is some, there is some part of alien within us for sure, hundred percent. Bro, it's like there's no way that these animals, bro, they haven't been building buildings and built and flying airplanes, but we're out here as humans, bro. We, yeah. we're, we're creating shit, bro. We're my, different. My counter pyramids. to you is the pyramids, that we when have you look at build some shit like that, and we can't. No, nah, we could. I nowadays, we, we definitely can, could. Bro. I think. But the, the thing about the pyramid is not. The thing That's about the pyramid animal. is not that we can't build it. Is that where it is built in the exact spots? There for a reason, based off of like the stars and energy and shit. So that's where it's a little. It's based off of the um the equator. That's what it, I'm pretty sure. Um, something like that, bro. It's but crazy. like, bro, like if you really look deep into the pyramids, bro, like if they were off by a block, the whole shit would have been fucked up. And they have, they have cinder blocks in there on top of the chamber, three yeah. levels that weigh like. 30 tons, which is like 12 semi trucks. Back then, even if they would have rolled it up a hill, they would have had to stretch about 30 miles at a specific angle to get it at that level. And they have helicopters. Yo, you like watching? Space. You like watching these type of shows, right? Because I do too. <laughs> nah, because I do too, and I can tell. Hey, what type of shows bro, do you like? The hustle, running the blood. That's hey, bro, that's ancient age. Hey, what type sure of is, is that? Bro, it has I like. To be, hey, bro. I like Expedition Unknown. What, what do you like? Bro. What show do you like watching? I, that has uh, to do they with, like, just dropped it. Joe Rogan, Joe Rogan had him on the podcast. I forgot. It was like the, the Egyptian Mysteries Unsolved. Yeah, on Netflix. On Netflix. That That's uh, Jimmy Corsetti or bro, something. Bro, that shit, he spits knowledge and, like... He talks how, about Atlantis and... Bro, Atlantis, that shit... Bro, there's living proof, like, there's scientific proof of the split of the ocean. Yeah. That's, literal, that's what earthquakes are. Split of proof. the ocean? Yes, What's bro. That? Well, who was it that did that shit? So, like, Pangea used to all be, like, one. Like, it wasn't America, Africa, okay. Asia. It was all one thing. Like, the continent stripped. Like, that's a real thing. Yeah, like, so, supposedly Africa was connected to South America. North America was okay. connected to It all to used Europe. to be one thing a long time. And then, basically, it all just became Western and Eastern. Because East of the water that broke, hence Atlantis being underground. Yeah. You feel me? Well, I forgot this guy's name, bro. Oh, I think it's Otis. I'm not sure. That he, it's in the Bible that he had to split the ocean literally. Moses, Moses, <laughs> Moses, <laughs> Otis. <laughs> Otis is Jay Z and uh, yo, yo, and Kanye's yeah. song, bro. Shout out, Moses, bro. There's scientific evidence that this man <laughs> split. He, what, he parted happened, the Red Sea. That's he the. He parted it that's what, to get people to walk through. That's, that's crazy, bro. That could happen. Oh shit! I never thought about that. I never thought about that. Could bro, there's scientific well, proof of that shit happening. It could be yeah, aliens, happening, no, you know? no doubt. Like, you know how, how all that shit crashes down, you feel me? And like, so so well, my thing is, is like, when you when you don't have the technology that you had, like, you know, back then, and you're you're understanding things, because like you said, like, it's there's proof that the ocean does split somewhere in the world for some reason. I forget why. But how do you even know that shit? Like, how do you know how the, how, how the earth is connected and... And what's gonna they happen? Had, like weather. How do you understand like like crops and shit? They, they had just traveled the world back then. I forgot who it was. And then they mapped it out. And before we knew about um Antarctica, right? It was before we found out Antarctica like 1700s. But then go back to 1500s. There's a map that has Antarctica on it. So that's like, yo, yeah, we just, those how, how do they know about them. Antarctica, but we discovered it in 1700s, <laughs> but on the maps of 1500s, they're trying wow. to see and you, shit, it's on there, you yeah. feel me? You guys that's were crazy. talking about the Egyptians, like the library of Alexandria got burned down. Yeah, yeah. Supposedly it had all of that knowledge of the previous civilization that lived before the Egyptians. So maybe they took the knowledge and then burned it down. They must burned have been a the crash. knowledge. They, I don't think they stole it. I think they literally burnt it because that's what you do. Hey, there must hey, have been a crash in humanity, know, bro. Like there, there must have because. Have you seen the episode of Joe Rogan with uh, this guy? I think his name's Graham Hancock, and they talk about that ten thousand years ago or twelve thousand years ago. Uh, a meteor hit and it ended the ice age okay and that's how everything got fucked up then that's what they say happened to atlantis like the city underwater it went underwater because there was an asteroid that hit like twelve thousand years ago that ended the ice age and then 
what we what we are today is that the remnants of the old civilization that yeah. they went around telling the Egyptians how to do shit and, the, and everybody else. The desert used to be green, bro. Yeah, it used to be a green land. Like that shit used to be a fucking it jungle. It's a forest. Yeah. What about dinosaurs? That's crazy. Bro, we have di- dinosaurs I, I are definitely that real, bro. Yeah, bro. What you mean? <laughs> yeah, there's fossils like <laughs> Shout out Archie, bro. Remember Archie, bro? The dinosaur, bro? You're the fucking lizard. Oh, true, true, true. true. You don't believe in dinosaurs? What's there's there's fossils like they yeah, they they build out the bones like a T-Rex. No, nah, but it's I, not fake. I I feel you cuz I believe in dinosaurs, but I have no idea like I just Bro, I don't, I, I mean, like it's, it's just hard for me to understand that, like, bro, it's hard It's hard for me to understand that something wiped out all the dinosaurs, but for some reason, like, every every other, like, species of animal, like, you know, the the monkeys, alligators, snakes, this and that, they're all alive, they're chilling, but it was the dinosaurs that... I think it was, bro, look, look, like crazy, tactical. crazy thought, crazy thought, crazy theory. I don't know anything for anybody out there that thinks, bro, I don't know shit. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, what if, bro, some, some aliens just from another universe, right? Another galaxy came to Earth and they're like, damn, this planet is perfect for our people. Let's plant some, you know, people here and start a civilization on Earth. But we got a problem. These dinosaurs are fucking massive and they're crazy. Like, we'll never be able to... So, so, they got the technology and they said, yo, all right, dinosaurs, you out. Every other animal, ecosystem, it matters. Dinosaurs, that's it. Like, somehow, Took took them all out, bro. The and oaks, now and now they t- and now we're humans. The oaks so. are like real life dinosaurs, and bitches just are like theory. The or like the huh? What are what did you say? The um, I forgot. It's like a with with the uh, antlers, bro. They're called oaks, I believe. <laughs> the so moose. Moose. With the giant. The, they're giant mammals. Oh, yeah. Elks. Elks. And elk. Oh, I got bro, you. Those, those shits are like 13, 14 feet tall, yeah, over fake. a thousand pounds. You feel me? That's living proof yeah, right there, bro. But those are mammals. What we're saying is before there was dinosaurs, giant lizards that lived out here. His theory is that aliens came here, saw it, and was like, all right, let's throw an asteroid <laughs> yeah, at this bitch. I don't know. I don't know if it was an asteroid, but like, bro, if, bro, if they have the technology to come to Earth, and this is a thought and a theory. Yeah. I don't fucking know if this it happened. Could, it could definitely. But what I'm saying is if, if they came to Earth, and they have the technology to go to Earth. They have the technology to do whatever the fuck they gotta do to wipe out these crazy ass animals so that their people could live. Look at the that, that's like us going to Mars, bro. That's like us going to Mars, and it's a beautiful place with water, plants, trees, but fucking creatures running around. Like, yeah. and we're just like, yo, Eliminate this is this is amazing. We gotta be in Mars, but these creatures, bro, they gotta go. And yeah. then we just For come sure. out with a way of like. For sure, I think that can be like a thing. But I, but, I, I but think it's more likely. Look at the moon. The moon. Yeah, is, hey, but if that's we're asteroid, getting hit all the time, we get hit all the time. But maybe I'm wrong because if that's the case, they did a terrible job of like you know the evidence. They kind of just left that shit there. So bro, like I don't know. That's maybe crazy. they just didn't care. I don't know. The Amazons are still getting discovered today. They have yet to like go through like even Antarctica, bro. Of it, and they're finding fucking sculptures and shit, and, like pyramids there that trace back to history people would write about stories that would go around mm-hmm. and it's going back to the Amazons bro yeah. and like vivid proof of that <coughs> shit it's like the ocean bro like yo I Antarctica too discovered. we don't know we don't really know much about Antarctica look at our oceans bro so uh, the way I think is like it's cool that we're trying to go to space trying to go to Mars I don't know why we haven't been back to the moon if we, we've only seen like a percent of it I think that like, program was fake bro the I mean I don't like, I, I don't know but like all my my thing is, is like if they went to the moon back then and they went to like not even a percent of the actual moon why not go again there has to be why something not? there holding them back just, just why I not think. go I again they probably but, found something but anyways like why are we like, trying to go to space so bad and it's costing us so much money when we don't even know what's within our earth like we, our oceans bro they're so deep they're so big God we have more water and ocean than, than <laughs> land Godzilla, bro, for real. Godzilla Godzilla could be could be anything anything, uh, anything. Megalodon, bro. The, Any, because yeah. you said you said you said the theory is that your theory is they took all of them out, right? Took There's always out. that one that might have just figured out to just hide at the bottom of the ocean. Oh, yeah. And then one day he's going to have to come up. Oh, yeah. We don't know what's at the bottom of the crazy. ocean. They that say there's it. a whole ocean <laughs> underneath the ocean. <laughs> but we you have to that? discover 70% of that shit. No, no, no. Listen to me. The, the, the earth is 30, 40% land, and then there's ocean. They're saying that underneath the ocean, that there's a, a part of the crust, like the crust is what the ocean sits on. Uh-huh. There's a part underneath it that there's a whole nother ocean. There's oh. there's more water inside another thing, and that's what they say Middle Earth is. Like, there's a whole different section underneath the ocean that can be. And that's why I believe where the, the water crashed into 
Atlantis and shit. I mean, there's there's a under the pyramids, or it was like under Atlantis where they had when that water shit happened, they made cities, whole cities in the Amazons underneath the ground. And you know the technology, uh, they could tell by the heat yeah, the shit. lidar. That yeah. lidar is crazy. Bro, they they found cities underneath the ground, bro. Yeah. Like real shit, like real tunnels. Yeah, 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 bro. There's All trees that, that grow within the 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 community, and and you won't even be able to see pyramids because it's all trees feel me so and the lidar just removes all the trees from the surface dope. and shows you like what's actually there it's crazy but that moon shit is facts bro we had the technology back then it makes bro, no sense bro we could have been going there must have been they something might still be there going. bro that was like yo hey, we and never here's coming a, back here we leaving that shit how it is hey we here's a look tell these people this and that I may be wrong again I don't know but the way that I see it is like bro if you go to Mars, right, and you land in Mars, or you take a robot and take it to Mars, and that robot, like, drives around for a couple days, that's cool, like, and then he goes back home, and then we, we look at it and we're like, damn, there seems to be nothing at Mars, but we're going to keep looking. Bro, what if an alien goes and lands on Earth, but lands in, like, Antarctica or some shit, or it lands in, like, a desert? And then it just drives around for a couple of days in the desert, doesn't find shit, doesn't find water, doesn't find life, doesn't find anything. And then it goes back home and it's like, man, Earth is whatever, bro. Like, we didn't really find shit. Could happen. But I would think they would see the lights. Not to say, to I, I understand that they see the whole, like, the telescopes and all that they're able to tell. But all I'm saying is, like, we if you only actually physically stand and walk through and dig in a, in a small percentage of Mars... We don't, you don't really know what's around Mars, bro. Yeah. That's like Earth. You land on Earth and you dig around a small percent of like a desert. Like, what do you really know about Earth? Not much. They say Mars used to look like Earth. Like, something hit Mars, made the atmosphere go away, and that's why storm. It's, it's red. It was a storm, a dust, uh, dust storm, I believe. Oh, for real? Yeah, that's why it's so dusty and that's why it's orange. That's all sand. I thought it, the atmosphere went away, and that's what happens. Is everything dies on the planet, and then it becomes rust. Like, bro, I've seen what, some shit, bro. Like, out here, I've seen some shit. What have I you swear seen? To God, what have I've you seen, seen bro? Shit in the you're, sky, you're 19. Bro. You haven't seen nothing. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> no? Yo, you seen I more believe, than shit. I know. No, 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 no. Tell me, what, uh, bro, what believe, have you seen? I believe in that alien shit, bro. This... I've I've seen a couple I've seen a couple things out I've in the sky. Have you guys seen a lot of weird lights lately? Yo, have you guys seen shooting stars? No, but I've seen some weird lights. Bro, I've seen. A, I, mean, I yeah, just times. I just found out the other day that shooting stars aren't even stars. I thought they were stars meteors that that died. Stars. Yeah, they're meteors. It's a yeah, rock. Yeah, they're meteors going around. That shit's going. Cause we're right next to like power. yeah, yeah we're right yeah. next to the meter. Uh, the asteroid belt. The uh, boat is, belt, yeah. The asteroid belt is past Mars. Bro, you you guys ever wonder what the fuck is? This? All the, All the time, time bro. Yeah. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There is like unlimited fucking space. As he's breaking up the yeah. bud. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I mean, there's a black hole. Like, they, what the fuck is a black hole? Nah, they have what a black hole. I, like, I could try to explain to you hey, what a black hole Like is. 30 million light years away, right? They discovered it in like 2019. They saw it absorb like a few stars. They go back to it this year and they say the stars literally got shot back out. Yeah. Like what the? It's fuck the first is time they they. Yo, tell me about black holes. I don't know what black holes are. Right. I want I want to learn. A black hole is a star that collapses on itself, and in, from what I've heard explained is that the fastest thing in the universe in the universe is the speed of light. The gravity is so strong in a black hole, light can't ex- escape it, which breaks the laws of gravity. So inside the middle of a black hole, it's called a singularity, and they don't know what it is. Like, so laws of gravity could break. I never knew that. It, it's the laws of physics go out the window when they start like Einstein came up with the equations this and that they cannot explain what's inside the middle of a black hole and then they found out recently that inside of every galaxy the middle of it is a giant black hole what happens if they take a camera and throw it in the black hole it's just gone folks. No, I'm just wondering, like, you'll what, never does it get break? that signal because the fastest thing in the universe is light and light can't escape so that's why you can't you can't ever check what's inside a black hole it's, it's like unlimited it's what the unlimited? light can't escape and we there's nothing faster than light so it doesn't really what? make sense i still i'm sorry i still out. i'm not it's like yo we, it took it in throw it back out you're like yo what and then the exactly fuck is recently there, they, they saw i a can't star wrap my head around get that shot into a black hole and then a year or two later the, sh- the, st- the star gets shot out of a black hole like with energy like it shoots it like a they say a, like a nova or something earth like scientists supernova research I yeah. know that like earth was hand picked bro like someone hand picked like there's a 0.000 numerous amount of 0.1 chances that earth was 
to be how it is right now with the oxygen and shit. From what I've heard, that that shit was hand. This goes right? back. That goes back to what I was said. What is what is, is your real. guys? What is your guys? God, God, hey, God is always real. Just yeah. let me just tell you, like, mm-hmm. even though I mentioned aliens, bro, God is real. God made and let me tell you something God. else. Hey, I feel like God is within all of us. That's why we gotta respect each other because if you, if you disrespect atheists though, they just don't know it yet. Who? You know I mean? The atheists. That's none of my business, bro. I don't know what well, they are. They don't are. know it yet, but I think God is in all of them. I don't speak, I, yo. I don't speak on what I don't know about, bro. I don't know what these people, atheists. I don't know, bro. You do your thing, but God is real, and energy is real, vibrations are real. Be good. Karma's real. Karma's not a bitch. Karma's a bitch if you're a bitch. Karma's beautiful. Life is beautiful. And, bro, God is within all of us. Don't disrespect nobody, because if you disrespect somebody, you're disrespecting yes. God. And then evil is within all of us, too. So that's why we, that's as, as humans, got to be like, we got to find the balance. We got to understand and realize what's good and what's bad and always go towards the good. Can, can I ask a quick question? Hey, bad is easy, bro. What's up? Just that's back. Beautiful perspective. That was beautiful, by the yeah, way. Thank you. I bro. agree with your uh, standpoint on that. Um... Pertaining back to like end of the world type conversations that get me paranoid. <laughs> yeah. What would you guys say is your action plan for that? I'm just curious. For the like, end of the world. Like if right. A, okay. Okay. All right. All right. What can chill, chill, chill. Chill. Let me let me let me give an example. We're sitting here right now. We look right there, and all you see is just bombs just falling. Boom. Oh, boom. 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 Yeah. What the fuck are we? Yo, you ever seen? You ever it? seen? I know exactly how to answer that question, and it's all within a movie. It's the perfect movie that describes it. And it's um, it, it, it's pretty much facts. Like from from the, what I saw, it's called "This Is the End." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's a great movie. <laughs> yeah, that they're all hanging out pretty in the mansion. Yeah, yeah. That's, sure. exactly that's, what, that's uh, what is it called? The 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 day um. Well, like Brad Pitt with judgment the dog. Day. And judgment shit. day. It's judgment day. That's Brad what it is, bro. That hey, that goes back to what I said. Keep the karma clean. Oh, I guess Cause judgment day when say, judgment day is coming. Or like, would you run? So if you stay put or run, if it's going off, an asteroid, nuclear bombs are going off. Yeah, just talking shit. Yeah, you don't have a chance anymore. Even if you survive, bro, the the. It's over. No, no, no. What yeah. about what yeah. about yeah. Would get fucked, what bro. about zombies? No, How would you do with that? But that's what I'm gonna tell you is like, part of why I hustle is to be in a position in the future to have bread so that I could survive a, something like that. I want a uh, underground bunker, bunker hole bunker. set up like in I, case shit yeah, goes I down. I want to be prepared. I want a couple. Like, like, I, like, like, I just want to have enough money yeah. to be able to do that. Like when it goes down, I, I want to try to like live through the end of it. Why not? Like. The poor humans were trying I to probably survive. shouldn't say this on camera, but I would love to have a couple like hidden doors within my house. Like you know what I mean? Like you touch something doors. like yeah, secret like, doors. You, you touch something and like like the chimney. But let yeah. me just stop. Some Batman I don't vibes. You know. Yeah, yeah, that makes but, but you yeah, flip yeah. the statue's head, you click the button. We've all watched well, those movies yeah. though. You slide down yeah. into yeah. the back cave. I won't get I won't I won't, I won't get into I won't get into details. They had prank Jim Carrey. I don't know if it was a prank, but like he was on Hawaii and they they sent a notification where like Volcanoes about to, or like a nuclear war is about to happen. Yeah, you're not, on the island. You have nothing funny, to do. Bro. Spare it, the next 20 minutes. And he said that like, dude, he just sat on the beach waiting, and that like completely. Yo, that's not a that's not a that's not a prank messed, though. That's they, kind no, of no, it wasn't a prank. They it was, messed up. It was it was, a, the, it was a mistake from the system. The Navy of Hawaii or whatever. Somebody clicked the wrong button and it sent an emergency uh, crazy, notification bro. to everybody's like, phone. Yo, some people die, say, that, seek shelter 15 minutes till a nuclear war had hit. Yo, that's crazy, though, because he some people could have... He waiting, bro. Who? Jim Carrey? Yeah, he, he said hey, he but, sat there just... Hey, that's dangerous, so waiting, some bro. people could have like, looked at that as, like, when you survive, bro, he was like, the purge. Yeah. I'm forever content yeah. with life. Or, like, like kill themselves because yeah. they were scared. Never grudges, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Jim Carrey's interesting. I like I like how... Yo, you guys ever seen the Truman Show? Jim Carrey movie, The Truman Show. That's no, a badass movie. No, I gotta see it. Oh, oh man. Maybe I haven't. I don't know. It's, it's, what's uh, it about? Which one is Jim it? Carrey? Is he's born? His parents give him up for adoption or whatever. He's made in a lab. I forget. But they put him inside a bubble, a giant he was dome. He's just the chosen one. He's the chosen one, and the whole sh- it's a show about him growing up from when he's a baby to now he's an adult. What and is it called? The Truman Show and. But it's a movie. His whole it's life is scripted, and, and he starts catching on to the end, and that's what the whole movie is about. Is like, he's, does he ever he's, get out the bubble? He, uh, you gotta watch yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, idiot. <laughs> No, it's because a, it's, I, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting movie. perspective. So I bring it up because the way he, he, the way he frees himself or gets out when he starts discovering shit is through the sun. So he he he's willing to he's willing to chase the sunset in the ocean, the ocean, to just find truth, you know. So like he swims all the way to the sun, and in in real life you die. You're never gonna swim to the sun, but he swims all the way to a wall, 
and then he climbs up the little like stairs and then he like exits through the sun so that gets me thinking like what is the sun <coughs> and we we can never that's like a black hole we can never touch the sun we're never going to be too close to it yeah. and it's the most consistent thank god for the sun shout out to the sun like we need the sun if it wasn't for the sun nothing would work so it's the like the sun is energy literally right. everything yeah, so so we trip out so much about like we got to exit earth we got to find mars we got to find this we got to find that but like none of that matters without the sun what are we doing about the sun how do we make sure that, like i get that it's been around for years but like how do we make sure that it this guy's it's worried solid. about the sun the sun's gonna be all right i'm not worried i just want to make sure it's good bro shout out <laughs> no, sun. The sun. Lie. like if you pay attention to the current national weather we going we got some fucked up shit going on right now, bro. What do you mean? Tornadoes, California, random snowstorms, yeah. fucking all the time. The nah, fires. dude. But it's been a lot more like hectic no, lately, in my mind at least. Bro, you look at second world, know, third world no. countries. I that shit, shit daily, like that. Like, you the just fact that there's a war like in the middle of two countries right now, different. and we're just sitting here and there's motherfuckers getting blown up is crazy, bro. Yeah, sad. The fact that China just <laughs> did the whole money deal, that's crazy, that's bro. Good. There's a lot of things going on behind our backs that we don't have control over, yeah. but like you, I could tell you're paying attention. I'm pr- I'm pa- I'm doing my best yeah. to pay attention to it so that when it does go down, I'm informed a little bit about it. Yeah. But most people aren't. They can't focus on it. You're too worried about your everyday grind. Yeah. Um. The government tells you what they want, bro. Bro, the government comes out right now and be like, yo, that, that's not green. We lied the whole time. That shit's red. Do you know how many people will follow with that shit? You feel me? So many people, oh, that's red. You, uh, feel, I mean, you feel me? Like, I mean, I didn't get, I haven't been vaccinated, so that's, me. and I almost died from I COVID. So I let you know real? my stance. I, I almost vaccinated. died from COVID. It was a month. I lost like 30 pounds. Really? Wow. What'd bro. you feel? Uh, basically, like, if. Play-Doh was in my throat, clogging my. And you, they told system. you it was COVID. Yeah, I, yeah. Like I you got, got tested. Yeah, I got tested. Like a lot of everything. Like you can get sick. I didn't go to the hospital though. Okay. I'm, that shit would have killed you my, if you would have went to the hospital. Straight up, my wife's a fucking. That's why I married her. They would have gave you the needle. <laughs> no, they would have put tubes through your fucking throat. I know nah, someone that went to the hospital. Nah. I used to work for and him. And they died, died from bro. that. Yeah. They he died because he went to the hospital. No, I I did it the old school way: soup, teas, lemon, honey. How long? Exactly a month. You were sick with COVID for I a month. I was in my bed dying for a month. What? What? Like in the beginning, the, fir- the fevers, first COVID. The the worst, like the the main one. I like, think the worst one they said was Delta, which was the second one. I don't know, yo. All I know is I was fucked up. Yeah. My stomach too. I went from being Hector the father to fucking Arcange real quick. I I must have got every COVID. <laughs> They, I was I was working a job that I was going into hospitals every day, in the middle of no COVID. Way. Every day I'm going through I'm into a hospital. That was the crazy in and out. That was. Yeah, right. that's why. That's why a you, lot of people you, make money you, though. You do. You me asking. I was doing FedEx at the time. Oh, okay. So. Uh, you risking it all for them, boy. I thought, I was like, <laughs> whatever. I mean, what it trying is. to get this paycheck. Y'all was working at a restaurant, bro. Talking about risking it all. That's that's another one. That's risky. I was working there too. They always made you wear the mask. You want to know yeah, the situation? Yeah, like, you know, how much does that really do, bro? Bro, I, I was working with someone <coughs> that like refused to wear a mask. Like he got fired from multiple jobs. He was like, I don't wear a mask. He was, like at all, pure points like ridiculous. You know when the like the true lockdown was happening? I was doing AC, so I got like a packet that gave me permission to be outside. And that was the weirdest feeling, bro. That's crazy. That's crazy. Just what you just said. Was it was me and my partner driving to a building because the old couple's AC had got messed up and they had decided it, they wanted to install a new one in the middle of the pandemic. Mm-hmm. And I'm in this building, bro, and it was too surreal, like, so quiet, scary quiet, like, end of the world quiet. I don't know if that makes sense. I like, know exactly what you're I'm in the about. building doing the install no, and I'm like, bro, sure. this is weird. Like, no one's coming to the elevators, coming out their apartment. There's no noise. We're having lunch at our truck, like parked next to this, like by the bay. Bro, the streets were empty. I dude, remember those nobody days. out, and I'm yeah. just like, wow, this is. I wonder if this is what it feels like if Everything the world was were closed. going to like a fucking apocalypse. Yeah. Yeah. Military launch. Yeah. Nobody like, on planes. Out. Nobody out. Nobody yeah. in the balls. Yeah, yeah, like, everything's empty. Everybody's in their crib, scared, down. like wearing a mask. People like, were stuck I in actually, spots like that they didn't live. You feel me? What happened? You were traveling, that shit broke out. I'm happy I worked. I'm happy I worked during that era. Me too. Because I would have went crazy being stuck at home all that time, bro. Yeah, I got. Yeah, school got pushed back. Like what, two years? I can't imagine being a kid and growing up through that. That would have sucked. That, that it takes yeah, that's it takes two saying. years away from your social, yeah, like your so, whole yeah, high school, no school, middle school. And they told you all oh, two weeks. Like whoever was a senior that year got fucked. 
I felt bad for them. They yeah. didn't get no problem. Yeah, bro. You bro. know what I'm saying? Like, no life. You know? Super sad, bro. That time, and hey, the athletes, too, bro. Shout athletes out to the athletes. Got, athletes yeah, athletes got fucked. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what they were working. Yo, they were working their whole <laughs> life for that <laughs> senior Bitcoin year, took bro. Bitcoin went off. Real shit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they got athletes signing contracts with Bitcoin. Now, that shit worth, like, 30000 Yeah. Even 20, though it's going up daily. 2020 to 2022 is going to be remembered forever. Like, you're going to talk about that time to... In 20 years, you're going to be talking about, like, bro, that's so strange. history, And hopefully it doesn't happen again. Hopefully we don't ever get that's in a situation in history, like nah, that bro. again. It's, you know why it's always going to happen? Because us humans don't fucking learn. Don't scare bro. me like that. It, we don't <laughs> learn, bro. I don't know. The theories are that it came from a lab, that we were working on it. Like, we, they do this thing called gain-of-function research. Like, they're going out and trying to make the disease more contagious, more deadly, to see it, study it, so that they can prevent it in the future. And they're saying that's what COVID might be. It might be a lab in China that Wuhan, like they said, it, they know it comes from that place, and but they said it came from a wet market where they sell like, like exotic animals and shit. But there happens to be a government-funded bio lab in that same city. Like, what is the odds that it's from the a wet market or where it's from a lab? So, the theory is that it's man-made. That. What you're saying is like Bro, it can definitely happen. China's yeah. overpopulated as fuck. Too. Well, that's from what I hear. I heard China don't it isn't even overpopulated, but what they advertise out here, bro, that like yeah. you can't have more than two kids or some shit. They changed the rule. It used to be a one kid policy. Now it's three. And like uh, with the girls. But they really ruined their whole. They they really ruined their whole like country because what happened was is like nobody wanted girls anymore. Like everybody wanted men to make them money for their for their shit. They would kill the girls. They would throw them in the woods, leave them in the dumpster. <laughs> You'd have to hide them. Like it was only one kid, and they would, they would ruin you. Like China's different. Yeah, if like, you're gonna have one kid, and there's, there's, there's be no a freedom female. over there. So, yeah, it's communist. They uh, it's crazy. Bro. They're in a situation that there's <coughs> like three guys to every girl. So, most guys are gonna grow up over there and be virgins. It's a crazy <coughs> life. You like, got that one bitch at the end. <coughs> well, no, there's. Damn, I'm sorry. <laughs> you good? I'm dying. <laughs> <laughs> um. Nah, China's China screwed in that they got a lot of guys and not enough girls. It's fucked, bro. Yo, but anyways, back to the hustle. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, what's next? No, 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 hey, what's next for <laughs> what's next for the squad? What's Shit. next? What's coming this year? Y'all already know what's so. coming for me, bro. Tell him what's up. I thought he was about to go in. Let yeah. him know. Him. You know what's right. coming for me, man. You know I mean, these, these links are. Hey, act like right they here. don't know. Act like they don't know. Yeah, you feel me? Like I'm, I'm here. If y'all don't know, I already know. You feel me? That y'all know. <laughs> Nirvana. I'm here with my dogs. I'm trying to make this shit happen. Anything I could reach, that shit's gonna get touched. You feel me? I'm hey. gonna promote it like if it's mine. And I told my cousin Chris that. You feel me? I'm pretty sure he sees it through the action I'm doing. Oh, yo. He but I, I got a lot of motion coming in this year. You feel me? With my man, Joy, right here. We got a few promises we got to make. I'm trying to make this music shit pop off. Just trying to do it at the right time, right way. I haven't really had much time myself, but y'all going to help me with that, I hope. He's definitely talented. I try to be. You feel me? Appreciate definitely. that, by the way, my boy. Hey, and it's all natural. It's within. That's what's Everything important. Everything natural, man. Like, I don't know if y'all going to see that. You feel Organic. Me? on the podcast back the other podcast, man. Organic and real. Y'all, y'all gonna see me one of these days. Look, man. For a fact. This is all I gotta say. Devin's gonna has a bright future. He's his own biggest enemy. But once he realizes to re, um, drop music, big things are gonna come his way. Uh, for me personally, like I said, my biggest goal right now is Jug, Rolling Loud. If that can happen... I'll be proud of myself a little bit. Um, and just we trust little chosen one. I just want them to keep working hard. And they're going to, you know, sky's the limit for them. Pertaining to you guys, thank you. And you guys are going to um, have a great future ahead of you, man. We're going to do a lot of big things. Um, I got to interview you guys one day or, like, do a, my own type of setting and have you guys come to me. No doubt. Or yeah, something bro, like that. Whatever. That's definitely <clears throat> Part two, part two. Yes, sir. And you know, just keep. All I can say is, no matter what happens, just like you gotta believe in yourself at the end of the day. Fuck. Like if you get negative comments or if maybe you're not getting the amount of views you wanted, just stay consistent, man. And give out good content. 
and be strategic with how you post things, your hashtags, who you tag, you know, and annoy people. Yeah. I promise it'll help you a lot if you just annoy people a little bit. And yeah, that's it, man. That's what's up. And we're coming up on time, but what does Miami mean to you guys? Well, I tell people Miami is what actually made the hairs on my balls come up. Because I grew up in Broward, but then I grew I came to a very, very hard part. Hey, we like to say it builds yeah, ca- it, it builds on character. Chest, it builds character. Balls, That's how it is. Straight up. Listen, cause I <laughs> the thing with me is I was really rebellious and I wanted to get the fuck out of my parents' house. So I was willing to live wherever I had to, and that caused me to live in a lot of very fucked up areas of Miami. And, you know, some weren't as fucked up, but I was fending for myself very young, trying to figure it out. And Miami took me in. Cubans have always loved me. A lot of people think I'm Cuban, even though I'm Colombian, because I'm not a typical Colombian. I don't have the the paisa accent. The, Ave Maria, pues, hombre. I don't talk like that, you know. I talk more Cuban, because that's how Cartagineros, the Costeños, speak. So that's Barranquilla and stuff, like where Shakira is from, type shit, you know. And You're one of us, bro. Basically, yeah, claim you, bro. we're Caribbean as fuck, basically. Man, how about you, bro? I don't know, it's a beautiful service, the best thing in the world. We got, we got beaches, clubs, we got fucking we got Everglades, literally Everglades. Where people vacation, we live, Tarzan, we live, man. Tarzan. Hey, shout Tarzan. out Tarzan. Tarzan. <coughs> That's what's up. Yeah, we're definitely going to have you guys back. So just keep grinding, keep hustling. We're definitely going to connect. We'll be on your podcast. You'll be back on ours. And until next time, bro. Until next time. Sure. Can I say one last thing? Of course. Dima West, Midnight, Devin Official, DTH Judd. Um, yeah, that's my lineup, man. Y'all go check them all out for me, please, okay? Uh, yes, sir. Where can people find you? That's going to happen. LML Savage, L dot ML dot Savage. You'll see me there where I, you know, the bullshit I'm coming up with, man. You know? Yes, sir. Just trying to make some shit happen. But uh, fuck me. Follow those people I just said. <laughs> okay? Fuck me. DTH Jug, Devin Official. Devon. Devon Official, What's I'm that? sorry. Uh, DMAT West. At midnight. Trust me. You guys follow them, boys. You're going to understand why I'm pushing them the way I am. Put everybody on, bro. Yeah. Man, we full of opportunities. We taking advantage. Full throttle. Yes, sir. And it's the Miami hustle. <laughs> yes, sir. Another one. You already know. <laughs>